Okay, we are uh, concluding the specific area of uh, policy and uh, also segueing into risk management, which is a vitally important part of this whole process. Um, the uh, just a few extra details on policies. Um, one of which is I, I mentioned in regard to the the security frameworks, um, the common criteria, and uh, I I strongly suggest that you go to commoncriteria.org and uh, download as, as part of the study materials the uh, first part, part one, of the common criteria itself. Now, part two uh, goes into the functional requirements and how you define functional requirements. Part three goes into assurance requirements and how you define assurance requirements. And while those are important um, they are not necessarily uh, everything in those sections you don't need to uh, memorize in terms of getting through the the exam uh, they are you know certainly worth going through sometime but part one uh, does uh, give you a, a very uh, useful overview of security, um, uh, how you define security, how you define metrics and uh, standards and policies and, and all kinds of things like that. Um, it's a useful thing and particularly there is a diagram in there, uh, somewhat buried, um, that is particularly useful in defining threats and risks and threat agents and vulnerabilities and assets that everybody keeps forgetting um, in a, a diagram as to how they are related to each other. And the, the interrelationship between these terms is much more important to you, much better in terms of clarifying your understanding than uh, me rhyming off these terms and uh, attempting to provide definitions for them. They, they do all relate to each other, um, and it's, it's much, you know, spend, you know, honestly, two to five minutes with that diagram, and it's, it's more than me going on and on here in, in uh, a number of different film clips defining those terms. So, uh, that is, you know, that is highly recommended. Anyway, a few other uh, points here. Um, when you are creating policies, make sure that you include in your policy what to do about deviations from the policy. Your policy is not going to be perfect, certainly not right off the bat. So make sure that you have provision for what has to be done, who has to be contacted, who has to make the decision, what has to be documented in terms of any deviation from the policy. Now, hopefully, at some point in the future, you are going to refine your policy so it covers areas that required these deviations. But for the, the moment, um, the important thing is to ensure that you do define it, you do specify what happens with regard to uh, items uh, that aren't covered by your policy and, and areas and problems that aren't covered by your current policy. Uh, all of that stuff has to be dealt with um, in, uh, in the real world. And of course, security always should be in the real world, as I say, you know, we are in support of the business. This is not just some academic exercise. Um, when you are creating your policies, 
don't make it too strict. Um, the uh, if you if you make security too problematic, if people have to make too many deviations from your policy, then they are going to get in the habit of ignoring the policy, of not conforming to the policy. And any time that you are encouraging non-conformity with the policy, well, you are inviting them to ignore policy as a whole. You are inviting them to ignore security controls and safeguards and uh, countermeasures as a whole. And that is always dangerous. As soon as people get into the habit of ignoring security requirements, policy requirements, because they are unworkable or even inconvenient in comparison to the benefit of non-conformance, then, you know, they're going to start ignoring much more important principles. Because, you know, once you start ignoring policy, uh, who's to say what is important and what is not important? So, uh, make sure that you don't make your, your policies too draconian. Encourage conformance. Encourage people to pay attention, to, to have the idea that policy is there for a reason. Um, and another one of the uh, oh, security frameworks uh, documents, well, it's not just a single document that I kind of brushed past, was the National Institute of Standards and Technology in the United States. This has all kinds of really valuable stuff. Now, uh, as I, I mentioned, um, you know, some of these uh, pieces of documentation are uh, for specific requirements coming out of American law. But all of them are really useful, really terrific pieces of information, uh, guidelines, um, checklists, provisions of all sort with regard to security. And I, uh, I always tell Americans, you might as well go there. It's your tax dollars paying for it. The thing is, their website is completely open to the public. All the documents are completely open to the public. And so, for those of you who aren't Americans, it's free for you to download this stuff. And it's their tax dollars paying for it. You're not even paying for it. So, a valuable, very valuable resource. Uh, NIST, uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology. Um, use it. There's, there's all kinds of things, including uh, a number of documents in relation to risk management, which, oh, by the way, is the topic that we are going to cover next.